Hey, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, whenever you're watching this video. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to embed quotations. I'm Mr. Crayer and I'll be helping you out. This is an area a lot of students struggle with, so let's see if we can fix this problem. Uh, it's a little bit uh, mustered into this bigger idea of the support sandwich. We need to do a quick little recap here. Remember that when you're writing a support sandwich or you're writing any argument, there's three parts to it. First, you have your claim, which is your argument and your words, and then the evidence, which is what supports your argument. Now, today what we're going to talk about is using quotes from maybe a play, a poem, a book, an article to back up your claim. And then finally, your warrant is what's going to tie your evidence back to your claim or provide some further analysis. But what we'll be talking about is mainly that part two. Okay. Uh, the goal here is always to strive for fluency between what you write and what the author originally wrote. So sometimes it feels like you're writing an essay and it's your language, your language, language, and then it feels like this very jilted, like, oh, and then here's the language of the author. And what we're going to try and work on here is embedding that quote. And when we embed that quote, hopefully what's going to happen is there's a seamless transfer from your words to the author's words. So if you were to read it out loud to me, it'd be hard for me to know when your words end and when the author's begins. Okay? Uh, to work on that, this is kind of what I see as this first example in students that are struggling with this concept. And then uh, below it is going to be an example of how you can actually embed it. So the gingerbread man was a jerk. That's your claim. Your evidence is when he says, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. Page five. Well, okay, that's fine. So you have your words and then you give me a quote. But, you know, who is he talking to? What's going on in that sentence? Um, he says, you can't catch me, but who's you? What's going on here? In the second one, we have a little bit more context. And uh, the sentence from what the student wrote to what the author wrote is very seamless. So the gingerbread man was a jerk. We still have the same claim. But now the quote is embedded in a sentence that starts with uh, the student's own language. For instance, he taunted the old woman that made him as he left them behind yelling, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. This is much better. Now we know that it's the old woman that he's saying this to. Uh, I'm still a little concerned that the student said them. I think in the original story it's an old woman and an old man, so maybe that's what the student was referring to, but still could be a little bit better. All right. I think this will probably help you out a little bit, kind of three steps to have in your evidence is the TSQ. Uh, starting off with some sort of transition from your claim, setting up the situation, which, you know, explaining that the old woman is the one that he's talking to, and then finally that quotation. And this is, you know, obviously what's going to back up your claim. Now, it doesn't always have to be transition, then situation, then quotation. Sometimes you'll have a transition quotation, and then you'll explain the situation in one sentence. Uh, it doesn't have to be so rigid. But when you're struggling with this, maybe just stick to the TSQ. Okay? So the transition, like I said, from the claim to your evidence. If you're looking at this from the website, you should see on this page as well below this video uh, a link to helpful transitional words and phrases. If not, go into Google and just say something simple like uh, transitional uh, words and phrases to use in your writing. writing. And I'm sure Google will pop up a bunch of helpful videos. Uh, for the situation, oh hey, my wife's in. Uh, I'm going to pause this video and I'll be back. Okay, let's pick up where we left off. I think I was on situation. So the situation is explaining what's going on or what's happening in the quotation. Uh, yeah, what's happening in the quotation. So when you're putting in the quotation, you're probably looking at the page or the article, but that doesn't help anyone else while we're reading your essay because we don't know what's going on around that time. So uh, what you need to do is explain what's going on, who's talking to who, what happened before or after, or if it's an article, what, did the pr what does the author say before that point or what kind of claim is trying to be made? We need some context. We just don't want to quote kind of like plunked in. Okay? And then obviously finally making sure you have the quotation and then right after the quotation having the parentheses 
with the author and the page number that you got it from. And then a period at the very end, very, very end of that sentence. All right, here's an example of the TSQ. In fact, there's our transition and then our situation. Mr. Tubble always chugged milk directly from the carton. And then quotation, cups are for wimps. Real men chug whole milk like an athlete chugs water. And then finally, the author's last name, Noy, and then that was from page 92. You don't need to write like PG for page 92. Uh, uh, usually English teachers or most people are smart enough to know that you mean page 92 and you're not saying something like 92 apples or something like that. Also, don't put a quotation, or I'm sorry, uh, a comma here. It's not necessary. It just goes author's last name, space, page number. Now, usually if you're writing an essay about only one book, and you establish which book that is in the author in the intro paragraph, I don't even really think you need the last name. You can just put 92. This is really only necessary if you're talking about two books and there might be some confusion of who, you know, like where this quote came from. But just in case, it's always a good fallback, just last name, space, page number. All right? And so you see this TSQ and how it works together to embed your sentences a little bit better. I guess that clip art's a picture of Mr. <laughs> Mr. Tubble as well. Right, uh, this is a nice little helpful list of transitions as well. Uh, there's more to the bottom of this, but I just couldn't squeeze it onto this page. But like I said, if you put in useful transitions and leaking expressions, you'll see this on the web, or if you're on the website, you'll find that list as well. And they're all very helpful to start your sentences. They're not necessary. Too much of it gets really um, obnoxious, I guess. Uh, so use them sparingly, but sometimes when your sentences feel very disjointed, it's nice to have a transition in there. Things to watch out for is don't say things like this quote shows us or this quote explains or here is a quote that shows. Um, we live in the great uh, show me state, so just show me, don't tell me what you're going to do with the quote. Uh, just, just whenever you're going to say anything like that, cut it out. It's almost exactly, or it's almost always going to be additional information that adds nothing to the text. Don't tell me what it shows, just show. You know, I think that hopefully makes that a little bit easier. And then this is another one that's kind of tough. Yes, milk, period, it does a body good, period. That's how it looks in the book or the article or wherever you find it. But what you've done here is you've effectively ended the sentence here. And then now a new sentence starts with quotation mark and then parentheses, page 12, and then another sentence starts. Well, this 12 refers back to this quote, so you can't put that period there. Yes, it appeared in the book like that, but you need to move that period to the outside. Please make sure you move that out there. Now, let's say they did like, milk, it does a body good, and then it's like a question mark. You can keep that in there as long as you have that period right after that. But if there's a comma there, get rid of it. If there's a semicolon, get rid of it. Don't put an ellipsis. Don't put like put like dot dot dot. You know, just end it right there. Um, with fluidity, the idea is to embed that quotation into the middle sentence if possible. So in a lot of these examples I've shown you, uh, the quote comes at the very end, and then what you said comes in the beginning. That's fine. It's always good. But sometimes when people are still struggling with uh, transitioning and, and making it seem more fluid. It's more helpful if you move the quote to the middle of the sentence because then that helps us with this idea of uh, if read aloud it's hard to tell where the word where your words and the authors begin. And that's that's a really helpful trick that uh, you know like you don't have to do every single time but it's helpful when you do attempt it and it also makes sure that you focus on using just the most important words. So for an example um, Choosing a team to root for would be simple. That's your claim. Consequently, she always chose the team with the brightest colors to win the game. And then you still include the quote where the team with the brightest colors came from. Uh, I like this because, like I said, it makes sure that you only use the most important part of the sentence. So whenever you can, try and use as little of the text as possible that only gives the main idea of what backs up your, uh, your claim. That's the job of the evidence, not to take up a lot of space in your actual app. And so I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, there are also things on this page that will be helpful as well. There's uh, like a little cheat sheet that might be helpful as well for other questions that, you know, always pop up. This, you know, obviously this video can't deal with everything. 
but the best thing you can do is if there are model papers that I have given you or another or your teacher has given you please look them over and see you know what are the preferences of that teacher but hopefully this video gives you kind of like a primer to start with and good luck on those essays